When St. Thomas has worked out to his own satisfaction what the act of faith is, he then moves on to ask, uh, what do you do when you say, I believe? That's the act of faith that we make. And he gives an answer that he takes from St. Augustine. Augustine had a neat little phrase in Latin, which Thomas uses, and which we can translate, to believe is to think with assent, to think with assent. So that's two things, faith, the act of faith is an act of thinking, and it's an act of thinking in which you say yes, you assent to the truth of something you're thinking about. Now, the word that's translated think there in Latin is cogitare, which means sort of to, to mull over and you do that because what you're thinking about isn't totally clear, isn't evident. And so it makes you uh, sort of ask yourself questions. Is this the meaning of it? Is this the truth? In faith, that's the kind of thinking you do because what God has revealed is not obvious and evident. But as you do that thinking, you still say yes to it. And that's the combination of thinking, mulling over, and saying yes that Thomas uses to say what faith is. And of course the question then is, well, why do you say yes if it isn't obvious and clear? And Thomas says you do that by making a choice, an act of will, which determines you to say yes to this meaning and say that's the truth. And then that moves him on to the next question, which is, well, why do you make that act of will? And his answer there is that it is God. And the second article of his question is all about God and the place that God has in the act of faith. It's God who is being revealed to you and that you believe in. It's because of God that you say yes. And it's for God that you make that commitment of yourself that is faith. Now, he moves on then to ask about what is this truth about God that the act of faith gets you to? And his answer is that it is what he calls supernatural truth about God, the truth of God's own inner life. That's what we are called to believe. And he adds to that that there are also in what we believe certain truths that we could come to know by our own human reasoning. And they're also included in what we say yes to, even though they're truths that we could come to know through our own investigation. But there's good reason for God to reveal them to us because of the limitations of our mind. And in a fifth article then, Thomas faces the uh, fact that the believer in the act of faith can be faced with uh, a great mass of information. Just think of the scriptures from the book of Genesis to the book of the Apocalypse and all that there is in that. And he asks, well, what's the obligation to believe all that? And he says, well, God makes it uh, a little easier for us because through the ministry of the church, the main tenets of what has been revealed have been put together in what are called the articles of faith, the things we confess in the creed, and that's what we primarily have to believe. And then other things are pointed out to us, taught to us in the church, and as they are taught to us then, we're required to believe those. But there are a lot of other things in the scriptures that we do believe, but we're not obliged because they're not seen yet to be part of divine revelation and therefore not to have to be believed. So that's the, the basic uh, thinking of St. Thomas about what we do, what act we perform when we say, I believe.
I want to uh, come back on uh, some of the things that uh, I talked about in presenting how Thomas deals with this question of the act of faith, particularly the question of uh, what we believe in. Uh, Thomas says that it is something that is above the natural power of our minds to grasp for ourselves. It's something that God gives us. And the way he explains that is that it's God who made us. And God made us for himself. God made us so that he could bring us into the intimacy of his own self, knowing God as God really is. Now, he gave us uh, a capacity for that. We're open to it. But because he had to make us as creatures, he couldn't give us the natural power to get there ourselves. And so, in order to bring us there, he had to reveal to us, to make known to us things that we could never have worked out just for ourselves, what we call the scope of our natural reason. And this is what we mean when we talk about faith being about the supernatural. Not that it's spooky or kind of from another planet or something. It's rather that what it is is something that's only natural to God, the way God knows himself. And he wants us to share in that. But because we're creatures, we could never do that ourselves. And so in order that we could do it, God has to give us something bigger and better than our natural activity. And that's what we call the supernatural. Now, Thomas will also say, though, that uh, in Revelation, in what God has told us about himself, he also includes uh, quite a number of things that we could have figured out for ourselves, uh, what are called natural truths. And he sees that as the compassion of God for our limitations and our weaknesses. Uh, it's hard going to work out a question like the existence of God. It takes many people a lifetime. And then not everybody has the educational formation to be able to do this sort of thing. And so for, for these reasons and other reasons, God has given us the mercy of revealing to us truths that are natural. So this great gift of God that we believe in and that motivates our act of faith contains the inner hidden mysteries of the life of God revealed to us, of course, in Jesus, but a lot of other important things for our human knowing that God has revealed to us. One of the things I like about St. Thomas's analysis of the act of faith is the attention that he gives to thinking. It's something important for us, I think, today. He sees faith as a thinking, as a, a mulling over, as a use of our mind. So there is something in faith to think about, something to learn, something to figure out for ourselves. Faith is not the abandonment of intelligence and reasoning. We can work out the meaning of things to a certain extent, and we can give ourselves things that they're called motives for belief, reasons why uh, God has revealed this to us and uh, it makes sense to accept God's revelation. It also indicates to us that we can often have uh, difficulties in our faith. Things aren't clear. It's a, a mulling over of a sublime mystery that God has revealed to us about ourselves that's really beyond us, but that is what is going to bring us to happiness and salvation. And so we can have difficulties about it. And yet, when we are real believers, then we will go on saying yes, giving that assent, even when we're faced with these difficulties, confident that God will bring us to a point where uh, we can get some enlightenment about these matters. And that, of course, then uh, raises the issue for us of uh, why are we believers? And it becomes very important for us, I think, in the world today to remember that we are believers because God has made us be believers. 
And so to be people of faith is to be God people. And I suppose in practice what that means is that we are people of prayer. Because it's prayer that puts us in the presence of God and lets God be the light of our faith, the teacher of our minds. So thinking and praying. Uh, and then being able to handle the words of faith. They really are prayer words. The great confession of our faith is the creed. And the creed isn't just a, a lesson in dogmatic teaching. The creed is a prayer. It's a confession of what we and how we relate to God. The first word of it is, I believe in God. And we say that to God. And we do this dealing with the words of faith in the church because the church is the home of God's revelation and it's there that we have the words of faith and that we have the presence of God in the sacraments and in living within that church and letting ourselves be guided by its teaching then we're sure that we will truly be making this act of faith that St. Thomas is analyzing.